So the Ursa Mini 12K OLPF and the Fujinon 20 to 120. What makes this pair so special? What makes this pair such a good fit for me? And maybe you. So I want to sort of break down what a good camera and a good lens means for me. All right, so we've just climbed on the plane. We're about to take off. We're going to head to Qatar 11. So before it was shooting on a really, really fast lens, that was the main criteria for me. You know, the 1835 meant that. It had a little bit of zoom. It was really quick. And um, it was a very versatile lens. And it still is a very versatile lens. As time's gone on, I've realized that that is not conducive of what I need in a documentary camera package. You know, I've used most of the Blackmagic cameras, my favorite before being the, um, the G2, the Osa Mini Pro G2. Yay. Yay. Great dynamic range, awesome resolution. It, you know, there's not much you can say about the camera that hasn't already been said by countless people. But what was missing there for me was that little bit of extra resolution, especially when shooting docos and um, factual TV, where being able to crop in slightly and, and readjust your frame is really helpful and really useful because you don't often get a second chance at what you're trying to shoot. So she will eat now because remember she, she came away from the food to an area where she can feel safe and give birth. Yes. All right. For the past nine years, I've been looking for a lens that, that, that kind of makes sense to me. And you know, there are lots of big zoom lenses out there that, that fit my needs, but the price just, it's often way too much. About a year ago, a little Fujinon popped up on my Facebook marketplace and it was going for about six and a half thousand Aussie dollars. And I just knew it was the right time to invest in that lens. You know, it took a little bit of getting used to it. It's quite a serious piece of gear and just carrying it with you is quite a mission. But once it's on the camera, it's, it gives you so much flexibility when shooting docos and factual TV. It's just, you know, you want to punch into 120 very, very quickly. It's just you're right in there you, you can get your close-up go all the way to 20 mil wide it's got a back focus which can be thrown all the way into a macro mode you know you can get all your macro shots get really tight to the subject's face it's become my lens of choice for everything I work on When it came to the lens, I first paired that with the G2, and it was amazing, and it was great. Oh wait, Ivan, sorry, you in the shot? <laughs> oh, damn. <yeah>. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Brooke, do you reckon you know how camera traps work? Huh? You know, I just always wanted a little bit of extra resolution, because a few of the shows that I work on get delivered in 4K, so once you start cropping in on a 4K image, you're degrading the quality of that image. And even with 4.6K, it just doesn't give you much extra room to zoom in. And yeah, you can, you can, you can digitally zoom in and clean up some of the noise, but it just, it isn't quite the same. You can always see that it's been a bit um, zoomed in digitally. So when I got a chance to to get my hands on the 12K, the OLPF version, um, you know, I was a bit worried that the 12K files would be massive, which they can be, but. Um, we end up shooting on, on 12 to 1 compression and most of the time 18 to 1. When you're watching on TV or on, on a big screen, you don't see any differences between that compression or low compression. If you start pushing the grade incredibly hard, yeah, you will 
start to lose a bit of flexibility. But once I put that camera on that lens, it it just it it became something that I was comfortable to use in any situation. And yes, I've had that before, but not with this type of work, which is the factual TV content. You know, there you're gonna have to have the flexibility. You need the flexibility of a zoom lens and a wide lens. So for me, what makes this pair special is the resolution for one, but having this lens, which is sharp and clear and the focus is precise. It's not the fastest lens in the world. It's a T3.5, but over the last few years, shooting at f1.8 all the time just isn't what I'm after. It's not the look that I'm, that I'm wanting anymore. Um, I find myself shooting at 1.8 only in very low light conditions and for creative purposes. But this particular lens and camera combo, um, I feel that this is the best camera that Blackmagic has released so far. I know they've just released their latest cameras. I haven't had a chance to get my hands on those, but I think the 12K LPF is gonna be a camera that I use for the next few years. I don't see it going anywhere anytime soon. And this particular lens, there's a lens that unless there's a longer zoom that's faster and the same size or slightly bigger, I don't see myself changing from this lens at all. It's become part of the way that I film on every project. I've gotten so used to it and it's very easy to use and I'm able to achieve all the different types of filming that I need to do on these types of jobs. For me personally, this lens and camera combo, it's, uh, it's what I want it to be for now. <laughs>